the big news on the weather front at the minute because I know you love my weather updates from northeast England is that spring has finally sprung and it's actually getting quite warm. Of course last week when it was the Easter holidays and the kids were off the weather was still awful but now everyone's back at work and the weather's gorgeous. So job wise if you were following us last week on Instagram you'll have seen that I was making all of these display cases for an exhibition that's coming up and now I'm on to this understairs storage job so basically kitting out an understairs area with shelving and a space for a washing machine and a pull out shoe drawer. This is the shell of it. it it's huge. So this is nearly a meter deep. This is just normal MDF because this is just basically a framing piece like a liner which is going to go into the cavity underneath these stairs where it's obviously plastered out but you can't really run draw runners into plastered walls. Well you could but you're going to build yourself up to a whole world of pain trying to run draw runners into plaster. This is a beast. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to pick it up. As I say it's nearly a metre deep, heavy duty, look at that, full extension, 800 mil, draw runners, 80 kilo rated, so the really heavy duty draw runners that we've got here, because this is a, a beast of an understairs draw thing. And then the draw box for it, which I'm in the process of making at the minute. This, by the way, a couple of people have asked about jointing te techniques. Now bear in mind that the only bit of this that you're going to see, you maybe see a little bit of the inside of it, but you're only going to, well you're not even going to see this edge because there's going to be a uh, capping piece is going to go around this to hide any gap between this and the wall. Pretty much you're not going to see any part of this. The way this is jointed together, obviously we've got like angled cuts and stuff to match up with the the angle of the understairs area. But this is literally just glued, pinned, and a few screws in it just to kind of hold it together. This, it's it's really not structural at all, this box. It's just gonna kind of go under the stairs. Its sole purpose in life is to give a nice, neat area inside, and its main function is to, to support the runners themselves. So that's just, as I say, pinned, glued with type bond type 2 that I use and screwed together. And then the draw box itself, this is, and this is MRMDF for the draw box. I've got loads of non-MRMDF that I need to use up and for this sort of thing it's ideal because this doesn't need to be MR. The draw box does need to be moisture resistant really because you're going to have potentially damp shoes going into this, you know, people have been out for a walk and they take the muddy boots off and they chuck them into this storage area. As I say, 18 mil, three quarter inch MRMDF. This is biscuit jointed together. Trusty DeWalt, biscuit jointer there, and it's biscuit jointed and then pinned just to hold it together while the glue dries. So that's all done and pretty much ready to go into the draw runners. What I do need to do is build a little shelf inside it so there'll be like a, a shelf thing kind of at, at the back like that. Obviously once this is in, so this will get screwed onto the runners and then the door will be attached onto the front but I'll be doing the door last because I'll be custom making all of the panel doors for this project. I've got scales out Handy to have a set of scales in the workshop, just some something not too fancy that you're not about bothered about being kicked about. Just to check that the rating of the runners and everything is compliant because these, as I say, these runners are rated to 80 kilos. And that's fine, this box is about 15 kilos at the minute. Once it gets the shelf and the door on it, it'll probably be closer to maybe 25 kilos. So that gives plenty scope for... Who has 60 kilos of shoes? <laughs> Let me just show you what the shop looks like while a job like this is going on. I've got clamps kicking about. I've got the nail gun and nails kicking about. I've got the biscuit jointer out. I've got the track saw out. As I say, nail gun, track saw is there, dust mask, glasses, 
squares, blower, trusty Makita is still going. And if you've seen on my Instagram, I'm trying loads of different bits because um, I know when I posted about the DeWalt, the impact torsion bits and how they seem to be disappearing off the market at the minute. And by the way, I'm not looking to buy impact torsion bits. Thank you so much to everyone who sent us links of where to buy them. I don't want to buy them. I'm just intrigued as to why they're disappearing off the market. I've asked Screwfix and they said it was confidential and couldn't tell us. And uh, I've yet to hear anything back from DeWalt. So this is a Weira uh, impact torsion bit that I've got here. And I've bought a, a riser one as well. Is it riser? So I'm just putting them all through the paces at the minute. You know what it is? They all seem much of a muchness, to be honest. Biscuits. Broken Promises. I've actually renamed that one. So this dust on the floor is mainly from the biscuit jointer. Which, out of a matter of interest, can I connect up? I'm thinking out loud here. Can I use that? <gasps> oh, that's, that's made my day. I didn't have this hose when I got this biscuit jointer and I've never tried that and it fits. <gasps> So that's good news, look at that. I've learned something today. So we're gonna jump forward in time a little bit here because I've come to site now to fit everything. And I thought I'd just show you a little bit of this job. And it's kind of, I mean, this is a very typical Victorian kind of turn of the century, turn of the 20th century terraced house in Newcastle. It's a lovely, you know, pretty big house to be honest. But it's a terraced house, old. I thought I'd just quickly show you around the actual job. So here's this unit, which is now in, and that's installed. So I've had to level it out, just using some packers under the front edge, because it's pretty critical that this thing is dead on level. Otherwise, when the drawer comes out, the drawer's not going to be level. And I'd have problems getting the door to fit properly and all sorts of other things. So this is deliberately set back by 12 mil because there's no way that you want to be building a unit like this exactly the same shape as the cutout because although it might be the same shape as the cutout at the front you can guarantee that the plaster and work on the inside of this cupboard there might just be bumps in the plaster work you don't want to build a unit like this off site to try and push it in and find it doesn't fit this fits like a glove into this into this gap. It's then screwed down into the floor and that ain't going anywhere. And then I still need to, the, the drawer box isn't attached in yet. I need to do that, that's a, another job. The reason I've deliberately kept this edge low is to try and keep, this is a, you know, it's nearly a meter deep, it's really heavy. And I'm just trying to cut down on the weight of it. Every bit of extra wood that I've got on here is just generally adding to the weight of this shoe drawer and it just limits how much stuff the customer can put in it. So I'm really trying to cut down the, the weight of it. So as I say, there'll be a fascia trim going around this edge. I've got a, a straight line from this corner point. So I've measured a set distance, which I've gone out 21 mil, which I've based it on an 18 mil overhang and then a three mil clearance gap. So I've gone out 21 mil that way, 21 mil that way. And then I've put a level mark down that way. And then all I did was I run a chalk line up to 21 mil in at the top edge here. So I just temporarily put a screw in, which held my, my chalk line end for us. So chalk line on there and then all the way down. Now look at how far out of level this edge is, okay? So we're 21 mil here. We'll go really fat here. And then we're still staying quite fat here. And then look, and then we've got it suddenly jumped up 
and then this is a different shape all the way down. The key thing here is that I've got a straight edge from that bottom corner up to the, the top corner there. I'm ignoring the shape of this wall. That's of no concern. You're not going to see it once the doors are shut. But the key thing is, is when the doors are shut that it looks good and we've got a nice straight edge going up. We're going to the, to the plumb line, not to the shape of the wall. Same up here, look at this, look how far out of level this is, I don't know if you can see. So we're 21 here, the pencil mark is a level line, we're ignoring the angle that this is at. That's of no concern to me whatsoever. Once the doors are on, you're not going to see this bit anyway. So the doors and everything are going to be cut to the shape of this line that comes round. So, jobs for today. I need to finish building this internal kind of partition wall because uh, that's gonna, if I can, can you see on the plans, very dark. We've got this partition wall, we're then gonna have shelves coming up here, washing machine at the bottom, shelf across, shoe drawer thing over here, and then once it's all done, hopefully it'll look like that. So I need to finish building this and it's just going to get lined with 12 mil MRMDF. I'm going to have to run this cable with a switch on. I need to rerun that through this wall and fit in a one gang switch box inside. So I don't mind doing that. The electricians basically put this in ready and just left it dangling for me to, to run through. But I'm going to obviously have to turn the electrics off and take it out of the switch, run it through and reconnect it up. What else am I doing today? Once the 12 mil caps are on this, there'll be a fascia piece going on that. There'll be, I need to put a fascia on this edge to neaten that edge up and that's gonna form the support piece for the hinges for the door on that side. I need to put a strip in down this edge and that's gonna form the support piece for the hinges on this side. As I say, I need to line out the edge of this. I need to fit the draw box. And what else? I think that's it for today. That will take me most of the day. And then I need to measure everything up for the shelves because I need to make all the shelves. So five shelves are in there. One big shelf are in there. They all have to be reinforced. I'm going to pre-make the whole lot in the workshop so that literally I just need to come in and, and drop them in. And this is all jobs for tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll be in the workshop for the whole day making shelves and making the doors. So the doors will take us, uh, the doors and shelves will take us the whole of tomorrow. And then Friday should just be a case of coming in, fitting the doors, fitting the shelves, but bearing in mind I still need to fit all the shelf uh, rails because they all need to be adjustable so that I'm using bootcase strips up that wall and up that wall for the adjustable shelves. There needs to be cut out in the shelves for this trunking that's running at the back and I need to fit the door onto the sliding drawer unit as well and I need to sort the floor out because I'm going to be putting some new exterior grade plywood floor down and that'll go underneath the washing machine and under that side and that'll just tidy up this whole floor area. So there's a lot to do. It could well run into next week. I've got next week as a bit of a contingency, but if I can plow on, then I'll be fine. This is me little workshop for the day. The customer's already kindly covered stuff up for us, which is awesome. So I've just covered the tables and I've got this as a bit of a work area with all my screws and bits and pieces. I've got my workbench in here. Quickly show you this, we're in a place called Sandyford at the minute, which is literally, uh, let's think, centre of Newcastle is like half a mile that way, if not closer. And it's a lovely place. We've got Jesmond Dean kind of just over there-ish and if I just shut up for a second. It's just so quiet. You wouldn't believe. The centre of Newcastle's just over there. Look at these ugly black bins that they're putting everywhere now. These giant things. It's just an absolute mess. What a shame. This would actually be quite a nice kind of back alley, back street. But you've got these giant bins. I would imagine most people couldn't even move them if they were in the road or anything. 
So there you go, it was just a quick update from today. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe. If you're not new to the channel, uh, all the tools that I've mentioned today, there's affiliate links in the description of this video. Also, as well, I've set up a new thing on the website. If you're wanting to support the channel, but you don't do like the Patreon stuff and, and things like that, I've set up a new thing under the support section. There should be a link there for Amazon UK and Amazon in America. If you just click on that link to get onto Amazon, it just tells Amazon that you came to them via me. And then it'll give like, a, you know, it's pennies, but it all adds up. It doesn't change how much you pay for something. It doesn't involve me in the process at all, other than the fact that it just tells Amazon that you came to Amazon via my website. So use the links on the support section of gothithandyman.com and I'll be eternally, eternally grateful. And then after you've used that link, bookmark it so that every time you go onto Amazon, you always use that link and that'll be superb. Thanks as always for your support, you awesome, awesome people. I shall see you next time.